Heyo, everyone. Let's get bricky. Hey everyone, I'm Mega MacGyver, and welcome back to the King of Questions. That's right, your favorite afternoon show where I answer a bunch of questions, you find out stuff about me, and find out just how weird some people are in the world. It's actually not a bad tagline. Why have I never thought of that before? Straight off the dome, heading right into it. You know the show. It's not really a show, it's really just a video series I do ever so often. Basically, I have a whole bunch of questions from a list of questions no one ever asks. A lot of people ask these questions, I would assume. But basically, a bunch of questions that my good friend Dana gave me. So I'm still plowing my way on through them. So we're going to continue there. At the end, got some questions for you guys. I got to make sure I find that sticky note on my poodle. Which may take me a moment later, since how I don't really name them properly, I just type a whole bunch of random keys that I have. Twelve of them here with random names. Alright. Good to know I'm still not making it easier for myself. So we'll just dive into the regular questions here, and we'll get to those later. So, a bunch of these look like they're all around the same theme, which is good, because I planned them this way. So, first one be, do you sing in the shower? Um, no. Uh... I understand the concept of just singing in the shower. A lot of times when I would go into the shower, yeah, I'll have a song stuck in my head. But I think the biggest thing is that I don't sing because I prioritize more of the cleansing and cleaning in the shower more so than the actual shower, more so than being in the shower for a while and need to fill that time in my mind. My brain's already going well enough. I don't need to keep myself any more busy. So do I sing in the shower? Not really. Um, uh, do you ever dance if there's no music playing? Oh, yeah. As getting my co-workers, I, will. I do that all the time. I'm always, you know, snapping and grooving to my own thing. I hate it when it's slow and there's nothing going on. And a lot of times the ads that play in the theater lobby aren't the exact greatest. You can only listen to the same guy ad for about the 300th time before it's like, Ugh, just shoot me. Which, you know, if you can save 50 minutes more on Geico, then hey, maybe you can save yourself that. But I can't. So, not that I need insurance anyways, but hey. So, yeah, uh, quite a bit. I don't like, you know, dance. I'm not like, I'm not, you know, Saturday night fevering all the time, but, or, you know, I'm just like pretending to mambo or tango with somebody. Um, I guess that's a little weirder, but if you're so soon your own thing, that's... They ain't no home, that. They ain't no foul. You do you, boo. Um, do you sing in the car, and do you dance in the car? Uh, dancing, same thing. Probably to a lesser extent, only because folks are driving. Do I sing in the car? All the time. Um, I'm pretty much the only one who really drives my vehicle, and I'm pretty much the only one that's ever in my vehicle at one time. So, yeah, I put in my music, and I jam to it, man. You know, play it loud and proud as long as you don't get the police pulling you over. Which, yeah, probably nobody can hear how bad I am either. So, bonus points. Yeah. Why is this one in here? This is this random question breaking up this set called Best Room for a Fireplace? Barely even a question. Best room for a fireplace. It's only a question because of the question mark at the end of it, but weird. Um, living room or kitchen would be my area. <laughs> Whatever, like, the base floor is of the house, basically, in my opinion. If it's an electric fireplace or it's, like, a fake one, then I'm sure those could pretty much go anywhere. I mean, I'm sure I could pull up a fake fireplace on my other monitor here to just have going in the background if I wanted to, but why would I do that when I can have the sounds of rain? Which are... Don't know if you can hear that. But we actually have some rain going on outside right now! Um, so, yeah. 
I don't have any room for our house. Jeepers. And it's expensive to install. Chimneys and everything. Ugh. Never understood that about fireplaces. The point of the fireplace is to keep you warmer when it's colder outside, but a chimney is literally a direct hole into your house from outside. First off, I don't want to do but birds coming in or nesting, that's just no. And secondly, I want you to make the cold coming in when you ain't got the fire going. But you gotta get the firewood, and you got the pokers, you gotta get the safety from the animals. And there, and you gotta get the maintenance and clean it. It's that's a lot of work. I'm sure they're nice, but it's a lot of work for a fireplace. Uh, moving on. Uh, what was your first concert, and what was the last concert you saw? First concert is easy, and it was sort of a group of a bunch of like smaller bands. Most of them a little more Christian-based ones. There's like. For them, with the second biggest one being 16 Cities, which is really good. They're not bad. I don't really keep up with them anymore. I don't really keep up with any of these bands anymore, but really good with the headliner being Remedy Drive, which is really, really good, which has one of my favorite songs all along, um, which, yeah, was like my favorite in middle school. Uh, I'm sure I can play a clip over here versus me very badly singing the lyrics, but... All along I was looking for something else, you're something else. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a really nice concert, and I went and saw that, which was a couple weeks before my family actually went and got, um, tickets to go see Toby Mac and Skillet in concert when they were up in Sioux Falls, which was amazing. It was their Awake Tonight tour, so you had Skillet jamming out from all of the things from the latest Awake album, including things like Monster, and you had Toby Mac with their just recently released album Tonight and all of their hits off of there. Oh, plus you had Sean Locke opening. Ooh. It was, it was a good name. It was the last concert I saw. I'm trying to remember. I know I helped out at Remedy Drive up in Sheldon a couple of years. Didn't really stay too much for the acts. A couple of times for like Remedy Drive. Side Rock Profits was good. Matthew West wasn't bad. I only liked a couple of his. Um, Skiller was up there a couple years ago, but couldn't make it. I think it was maybe a Remedy Drive was the last one I went to. Not Remedy Drive, oh. What's it called? Rise Fest. That's what it's called. Rise Fest up in Sheldon. That's what it is. Sorry. What I like to see in concert. Ooh. If we're just talking musical groups, seeing Skillet again would be awesome. I've I fell in love with them back in middle school when their Comatose album was I mean like a year or so old. Oh, that's some good listening. That's when they debuted things like Comatose. Whispers in the Dark, which was their huge hit at the time. So good. Really good, like, walkout music. Huey Lewis in the News would be awesome. I was just listening to a little bit of them earlier. I love Huey Lewis. But I know they're not exactly touring so much anymore. Um, I'm sure there's, like, an 80s, like, grouping of, like, you know, Joni and Aerosmith or something that's come together for, like, a tour or whatever, or Def Leppard with them that... I'm sure I'd love to see with my mom. That'd be fun. Um, only because I didn't really get to experience their music when they were big. My mother did, but not so much myself because I was born late 90s. Um, so I've just experienced the music through their albums. But being able to go and see them and hear it live, I feel like it's an experience I'd love to experience anyways, but... Granted, I'm not exactly sure, like, what all the music they play now, because they do such a wide range, but, um, I really enjoy the vocal singing of Dan Avidan from Game Grumps, but his band Ninja Sex Party, I really love his covers of songs, and even a couple of, um, their own original songs are pretty good, a lot of them are pretty raunchy, but I really like his covers of things. Um, so it'd be interesting to see that. Oh, just came my Elton freaking John. Oh, man, I'm the legend. That would be amazing to go see an Elton John concert. 
Those would probably be like some of my top ones. I don't exactly have a lot of ones. Oh, Lindsay Sterling. She definitely be up top of my list. I love Lindsay. And I haven't listened to too much of her new album. Yeah, I have it downloaded. I just keep forgetting I have it. But I'm also getting her vinyl very, very soon. I pre-ordered it back in July and it's coming soon. I'm super excited. Um, I'd love to see her in concert because I love her music. So those would probably be my top ones. Uh, do I own a record player or own any record albums? Yes, I do. I actually own this wonderful Victrola, um, like, 5-in-1 record player. It has a record player in the top, cassette player in the side, can do CDs, you can Bluetooth in, you can jack in, it has radio. It is awesome, phenomenal, I absolutely love it. It was my uh, Christmas gift for my 21st birthday. Which is wonderful, and I do, in fact, have albums, and I got them right here. The first one I got, because I loved the movie when it came out, is obviously Baby Driver, because it is one of the best movie soundtracks ever, because of just how well Edgar Wright was able to put it all together with the music and the motions and everything and all the hits is just perfect. Um, and there's just a couple on here that I just love. Bell Bottoms is such a great opener. Uh, Hocus Pocus by Focus is a really good one that I always get stuck in my head. Um, yeah. I mean, who doesn't love that album? Uh, I also have, um, the Side B, which is more the score. Not actually opened this one yet, uh, but I did pick it up from Wally Wood, and it actually has a parental advisory, um, because I think that's because it has a couple of the, uh, remixes featured in the movie, which is interesting. But then I actually pre-ordered to one of them being the wonderful limited edition Skyrim vinyl, which I pre-ordered from, um, I Am 8-Bit which wonderful work company wonderful website with just wonderful artwork i mean you've got custom inside the custom artwork on the back plus it has the evergreen um actual vinyl disc really really good love that and then of course i had to get the undertale uh, vinyl two disc which has the red and the blue, the wonderful artwork on the outside. Oh, such a great 8-bit soundtrack. Um, I was actually inspired to get that by Jack Septiguy, who got one for his. Uh, the only other one that I specifically went out and bought is The Greatest Showman, only because I really loved the movie when it first came out. So I was like, oh, hey, they got it at Best Buy. Let's go at Best Buy. Orange and Noble, obviously from the bag. So I went and picked that up, really enjoy it. This is the quality of it coming off of a record and knowing it, as well as the sound quality that just amps it up a little bit. It's really nice. What is your song of the week? My song of the week, um, it's actually been the song of my week for like two or three weeks now. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm usually not one to um, listen to like metal, heavy metal, like really hard rock, but... This song I really enjoyed. Um, it's called Take Control uh, by Old Gods of Asgard. Um, some of you may have actually heard this one because it's off of the video game Control that just came out like a week or so for PlayStation. And I've been watching Jesse Cox play it. And when he got to that point near the end where it plays, oh, that was really, really good. Um, because it really much has, like, the deep, take control. It has that really, like, loud, booming metal voice. But then it just riffs into, um, the voices. Oh, it's really, really good. It has, like, two or three different solos. So it's like an eight-minute song, but it is worth the listen every time. Oh, he has both a drum solo and a guitar solo, which is really, really good. Absolutely love the song. Definitely go check it out. It's on Apple Music. That's where I found it. 
I'm sure you can look it up as well. Or if you have the uh, game control, um, once you get near the end, near the ashtray maze, I believe it is, you listen to it. It's really good. Other song in that video game is really good. But yeah, that's definitely my song that we highly recommend it. Really good. Even if you aren't a huge fan of like metal or rock music, give it a listen. I think you'll like it. Ever used a gun? So, yes. I have used a gun. I've used many sorts of guns. From being as young as, you know, like, eight or nine, I was using BB gun because of Cub Scouts. As well as uh, my grandparents, my dad's parents, got us BB guns, which were fun. We didn't shoot them all that often, only because we didn't really exactly know where to shoot them. Um, plus, it was more of just a thing, like, every once in a while you break them out. It's not like, you know, hey, you know what sounds fun? Let's go shoot the BB guns. It's more of like, oh, yeah, we got them. We should break them out sometime. Um... There's those, um, our good friends introduced us when we were in middle school to airsoft guns, and I still got, um, two of mine. I've got this, um, what is it, a uh, 6R P230, which I like because it looks very, extremely very similar to the Walter PPK or, uh, PP9, which I believe were both very similar, if you don't know, James Bond's gun. And for anybody wondering, there's the orange tip. This is an airsoft gun, all right? But yeah, otherwise, outside of uh, airsoft, which uh, my brother and I did for many years, um, yeah, I've shot actual guns before. A couple old revolvers, um, shotguns. My brother, my, not my brother's, my friend Zach's uh, single action. That one was fun. If you've not seen that video, that is on my channel. If you search way back through, that's there. Really fun. Um, I've also done, I think, a couple rounds of an AR once with my friend Zach. He was letting me try, I've done a, a Henry rifle, which is Henry AR-80 or something. It's basically a gun to where you can hide all the stuff into the buttstock of it, which was used in From Russia With Love, if you've not seen that James Bond movie. It's basically a very compact twenty two. All the barrel and everything can be put into the um, stock of it, so it's easy to carry around, hide, conceal, that sort of thing. That one's not bad. I've done a um, couple 9mm, I believe. Yeah, I've done a small amount of little things. I, I don't do it extensively. Basically, whenever I'm asked about, it's like, sure. I was like, I had Nerf gun. I doing Nerf guns for ages. Um, so, yeah. Own guns, outside of no couple of airsoft and building a Lego one every now and then, that's it. That's all I got, so. Um, but I've used them, yeah. I've used them before. I don't say I'm knowledgeable on all of them, but enough to be mostly safe with them. Um, what do you dip a chicken egg in? in? Okay, well, you gotta be specific here. Because, what are we considering chicken egg? Are we considering, you know, your little Tyson bites that you get and you do up in your oven? We talking like a McDonald's or a Chick-fil-A chicken nugget here. Because there's different types of chicken, different types of breading, you know. It sort of depends here. If you're talking... Well, actually, no. I'd say I would actually argue that there's almost nothing you couldn't dip a chicken nugget in. Ketchup, fine. Pretty bland, well in the middle. That's fine. Ranch, classic. Especially if it's like a buttermilk or something that has extra seasoning up in there. Mmm, that's good. That's fine. That's good. Barbecue sauce? Sure. That can sort of be bland too, so it depends on the barbecue. Is it a smoky? Is it a sweet and sour? Is it sort of a, more of a bold? It, it, sort of, it sort of depends what you're talking about here, barbecue sauce wise. But then you get to the Chick fil A. And Chick fil A, we got the Chick fil A sauce, which. Love that. Chick fil A sauce, mmm, made that for days. So you got their sweet and spicy Asian stuff, which is, ah, can eat that for days. Brilliant. You got buffalo sauce, which is good. Not so much chicken nuggets. I'd argue maybe chicken tenders or chicken patty. Chicken nuggets, not so much. But if you got a good mix, mmm, straight up Frank's Red Hot, I wouldn't suggest. I'd say more of like a, almost like a creamy sort of thing, something like you would get at Chick-fil-A or Hardee's, you know, something that's 
almost a little bit thicker that's a lot more um it's a lot more like this orangey sort of color versus um what am i thinking like red sort of buffalo sauce so yeah those good those are completely fine um mustard if you're into that i want to put it past you i personally don't but I don't see why you couldn't. That'd be fine. It's like mayo would just be. Ugh. Don't do mayo. That, that doesn't sound good. Not unless you're like dipping in the chicken egg and putting it into a sandwich. Or eating it with a bunch of lettuce maybe. It's just a deconstructed sandwich. And you know. Could be some area in there. Otherwise. Like normal stuff is fine. Like you get into stuff like. Horse riders or tortoise sauce. And I'm just being weird. I can see salsa maybe being okay. Marinara sauce, that'd be fine. It's basically like fancy chunky ketchup. Two, I'm also a guy who doesn't really prefer too much like warm sauces. Unless it's gravy. If it's gravy, whoo! You go there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what gravy. If you got gravy and you got a chicken nugget, or pretty much any sort of meat, you dip that stuff in there. You just go for it. Oh. Moving on, where would you bury Hidden Treasure if I had some? Ooh. I think I would go for more of the much sneakier approach to where I wouldn't so much base it on so much of a landmark or something. Or have a map of like 10 paces this way, 30 paces here. I would definitely be more the guy like if I'm burying Hidden Treasure. I'm not planning on going back to it. I would be smart to where I'd go to like a dig site. Someplace that's already under construction. And it's going to have something built over it. And middle of the night, go in, bury it in there, put the dirt back over. And people are going to build on top of it, none the wiser. If I'm going to go back to it, then I think the closer, the better. The more obscure. Well, it depends. Bearing hidden treasure depends on if you want to go back to it and why is you going back to it. If you're going back to it because it's an emergency or you doing it because you're being followed and you need to take it out to move it somewhere else. So it depends because how secretive do you be? Do you put it in a place you know where people might find it? Do you put it in a place you don't know where you have to try to remember it? Where people assume you're going to put it into a place you know or they're going to know you're going to put it someplace where you wouldn't look because it's not supposed to be obvious because you don't want people to see it. You know, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. I think it would depend on what. If I'd be coming back for the treasure, then yeah. Otherwise, I don't think I'd actually bury it. I think I would just try to hide it other ways. I think I'd do a lot more of, like, the fake books you'd see on, like, living room walls. I think I would, like, empty out the slits in there and hide stuff in there and glue it back shut. To where people wouldn't necessarily know. I think I would be a lot more secretive like that. Or like gluing them to the underneath of like cabinet drawers or something. I think I would do that more than bury it. Especially if I'm going to be coming back to it. I'm going to need it sooner. Or you do it the John Wick way. You do it in your basement underneath concrete. Where nobody's going to look and go. That makes sense. So do you use post-it notes? <laughs> Do I use post-it notes? I have five different colors of post-it notes. Not only because I write notes for myself all the time, but I got green post-it notes up there for one thing. I've got yellow post notes all over this wall behind the camera here. I've got blue ones over here, all with a different thing, all with a different meaning and purpose. Tons of them. I use them at work. They are great. It's basically like notes on your phone all the time. Stick them to your forehead. Stick them on your shirt, put them all over your desk, put them where you know you're going to see it. They're helpful. They might just be tiny slips of paper. They might not mean all that much. But if they work, they work. And they work for me. So yes, I use post-it notes a lot. Are you afraid of heights? Have I not answered this one before? I feel like I answer this one in like every other video I'm in. Seems like, what's your biggest fear or something? So I'm just going to answer this one correctly. Uh, yes, to a point. I'm scared of heights if I'm in a structure that is over open air and I don't have solid ground. Like basically like 
the Space Needle or CN Tower in Toronto for you to go all the way up to the Observation Deck and you would be out in that ring. I would definitely have anxiety and everything because there's nothing solid concrete below me. Because the, the biggest thing about heights is it's not so much about being up, it's about the falling. That I think is what scares more people for being afraid of heights than anything. The only way I could see being afraid of heights is maybe climbing up the height and not being able to make it, but still I think there's a sense of being afraid because you might fall from it. So I don't know if fear of heights is an actual thing or if it's everybody has a fear of falling. Which I'm, which, hey, I don't argue. We may all live by gravity, but it doesn't mean gravity is, you know, our friend. So, yeah, am I afraid of heights? Yes and no. Yes, in certain circumstances is probably the best answer. Uh, do you ever count your steps when you walk? Um, no. Not unless I need to or I'm trying to figure out a distance. Then I might, like, um, march step things off. Like, from when I was in high school and marching band, I know essentially about how much five yards is if I march about eight steps for a field marching. Um, otherwise, maybe sometimes in my house I do. If I'm, like, pretending to be like, oh, I can walk from here to the bathroom without anything i'm like counting my steps and everything maybe otherwise no i don't normally do it how many languages can you speak uh je parle français uh décemment uh uh one one in like an extremely bad memory of french uh, je parle un petit peu français um i took two semesters of it in College, I actually really enjoyed it, and I really actually do hate myself for forgetting a lot of it. I can count pretty much to like a hundred or a thousand, I think. I just have to remember what, um, which one is a hundred, which one's a thousand. Um, for some ways I think those two things in French confuse me a little bit, but I used to be able to do like extremely basic conversational French. Like, I could go to France and they'd know I'm American. But I wouldn't look like an absolute idiot. Um, so yeah. Only one, really. And very fragmented, very bad French. Um, sugar cookies or snickerdoodles? Ooh. I think I'd definitely reach for a snickerdoodle more. Because I like the cinnamon and brown sugar in a snickerdoodle more. But I wouldn't turn down a sugar cookie. Christmas comes. Sugar cookies ain't bad if you have a little bit of sprinkles. Otherwise, um... I don't know if, I think they're sugar cookies, they're like sugar cookies, and then they have that like bright neon pink uh, frosting on top with the little sugar sprinkles. Ooh, I really love me those. Those I take over a snickerdoodle. But, um, I think more times than not a snickerdoodle, only because I think generic like Christmas sugar cookies, they're a lot harder, and they have a lot more of like a bite to them, where snickerdoodles are a lot chewier and I like them. Take a vitamin daily. Um, supposed to be taking it daily, but um, yes and no. I basically eat all of the orange gummy vitamins out of my sister's gummy vitamin bottle because she doesn't like the orange ones for some reasons. Yellow, red, reddish, orangish, pink, fine. Orange, she doesn't like them, so I eat them that way. We're not wasting them. Otherwise, I don't really. Uh, do you chew your pens and pencils? Um very slightly it's very much just like the caps and i don't like to them i should have just roll them around more often than that because the biggest thing i don't chew them as much because i'm more twirling them around in my hand to give my hand something to do or i got them in my ear um sort of just resting up in there uh, because i like the feel especially the hexagonal ones i i really enjoy these big ones but yeah, there is a slight bit of chewing. Um, I'm definitely one to where if I drop a pin, I'm definitely like cleaning it off on my shirt only because I do know I unconsciously do it every once in a while and I don't want to get like dirt or drums or stuff in there. So, um, Pencils, I definitely don't only because I don't use pencils all that much. And, yeah, that, that's weird when it's pencils. Pens, I can understand. But pencils, yeah. I don't want to get like a splinter in my lip or something. That'd be awful. The question is, have you stolen a street sign before? What sort of a question is that? I know we've had some random ones on here. Like, have you ever eaten a pierogi? 
um, tea or coffee. Nike or Adidas. Ever won a contest? Uh, like, favorite type of fruit pie. There's some random stuff on here. But then we have, have you stolen a street sign before? Where are you living where people are stealing your street signs? Why is this a common thing? Like, uh, are we talking, you know, like a stop sign, a gear sign? Are we talking like a no parking after 2 p.m. sort of sign? Or are we talking like, you know, the little, like, political guys with, like, the really, like, wire frames that they stick into the front of the yard saying, vote for so-and-so? Are you saying people stealing those? Or like a stop sign, like... The answer is no. First off, I've never committed a felony or a crime before. Secondly, why would you steal one? What's the purpose? What are you going to do with a stop sign? Put it on the wall in your room? Just go to Walmart. I'm sure you can buy one for like 20 bucks or less. And probably raise less, just as good of quality, and you aren't committing a crime doing it. Except maybe the 20 bucks you spent for it because it was expensive or something. I don't know. Some of these Christians are weird. Really weird. That's saying something, because I have some weird questions, which we're going to get to here. And I'm going to go to this group of ones. Um, so, all in company here. So, for those of you who don't know, at the end of all these videos, I ask my own questions, because I like to ask questions. I love to hear answers. I love to hear people's ideas and thoughts and stuff from all sort of walks of life. And so, go ahead, post your comments down below to answer these questions. As well as any of the questions I asked, I answered myself here. And please, always feel free to post your own questions. I love to get questions. I really want to answer them. Do not be afraid. It does not matter how weird they are. Try and keep them at least PG-13. Um, otherwise, if it's more rated R, you know, privately message me somehow, either on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. I'll answer it there. But for here, keep it a little PG-13. Otherwise, here are your questions for you guys. Is With the first one being... What is the best pizza topping combo? That being said, pizza topping combo. That means you got yourself a pizza. Whatever size you prefer, from wherever you like, what is your pizza toppings? You can have as many as you like. What do you put on there? It can be as much as you want. It can even be stuff that maybe they don't serve. What is your go-to pizza topping combo? The next one being... Where is your preferred place, or what do you think is the best place for pizza? Where is it you think has the best pizza that you go to time and time again, or even not that often, but you think has the best pizza? To go with that, what's the best side for pizza? Are you a cheese or breadstick guy? Are you maybe a pasta or rings? Are you going more healthy with a side salad? Are you going really crazy with something else? Go ahead and post that for best pizza side. As well as the last one here to round off this sort of very foodie related one. Favorite mixed or custom drink slash cocktail being non-alcoholic. So basically what this means is what sort of drink or cocktail that's non-alcoholic do you like to drink? Things such as a Shirley Temple, which is basically grenadine and cherries with cherry 7-up or regular 7-up. Or perhaps maybe you're a guy who likes to mix stuff with their Coke or Dr. Pepper. I know I like to mix cranberry juice with Coke or Dr. Pepper from time to time because, ooh, really good. Um, I know every once in a while I like to mix Fanta and Fruit Punch together. Those go very well together. So what's your favorite sort of mix or custom drink do you like to make yourselves every once in a while? Non-alcoholic, though. That's the only thing I specified. Um, keeping it PG-13. That's what I'm going to leave all of you guys today. Those questions, I'll post those into the description for you guys, as well as to the comments that we can see them right then and there. Post your questions or comments down below. Hit the like if you like this video. Hit subscribe if you want to get more. I know I don't really plug all this stuff at the end, because I don't really like to shameless promote, but I got a lot of ideas coming. I got a lot of stuff recently that I really enjoyed doing. And I got a big project that hopefully is going to come out sometime around the start of the new year. It's going to take a little while, but I'm excited. So, stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I have been not only the king of questions, but I have been Lego MacGyver to all of you master builders out there. Stay perky, keep on, and I'll see you all next time.